today in this video, I'm gonna be going through the five pillars of success that will set you up for your 20s and into your 30s. You've clicked on this video and you're most likely a teenager in your early 20s trying to set up yourself for a better future, whether it's financially, getting more physically fit, having a better group of friends, having a better career, and that's exactly why you should stick to the end of the video because I'm gonna teach you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned now that I hit 20 yesterday. So I hope I can help you out with some of the things I wish I did sooner. And although sure, I'm only 20, I'm starting to feel old. I wanna get ahead of my life faster and sooner. Same as you since you've clicked on the video. So to help you guys, I wanna lay out a five step plan that you can hopefully implement to be more productive, more successful, and overall better person before you hit the age of 20. And then after that, these skills will help you in your 20s and 30s if you wanna have a better career, better relationships, better friends. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so number one of my five step plan is to stop watching Netflix. Now I enjoy watching TV and films as much as the next person. Some of the shows I love are Breaking Bad, Ozarks, Prison Break. I even watched some animes like Death Note and Attack on Titan. But a big awakening moment for me was when I found out the average Netflix user spends one hour and 40 minutes every single day on the platform. Do you know what you could do with 100 minutes extra every single day? And notice the word I use there. People spend 100 minutes a day on Netflix, which means it comes at a cost. Now this could be just lost time that you could spend elsewhere on something more productive, but it also could be like social media where it comes at the cost of your mental health. So from that, I create a rule that I dedicate to this called the rule of 100. It kind of blew up on Twitter so I'm gonna coin the term. At least for my stands, it blew up. It wasn't that popular. But the whole premise of this is replacing 100 unproductive outputs in return for 100 productive inputs. So doing 100 push-ups every day is an example of a more productive input. You get more physically fit and I also believe it implements more discipline and determination in your life, which are really good character traits that you can then push into other areas of your life, whether it's a career with business, whether it's with relationships. This really transfers across a lot of levels of life. You may, like me, spend 100 extra minutes making content creation every day because it's something you really enjoy. Or you might like playing an instrument, so you learn to play guitar for an extra 100 minutes, even a week. You may love to cook, so you spend 100 minutes every single week, sit down and learn a new recipe, give it a try. Now those are the productive inputs. Now Hayden, what are the unproductive outputs? You may smoke 100 cigarettes a day, a bit extreme. It will probably be 20 or 40, but not the point. As we know, the unproductive output is that it's bad for your health. It comes at a really large detriment. Some people even lose family members or close friends who just don't like that type of lifestyle. Like I said earlier, maybe a hundred minutes of Netflix and Netflix is fine to an extent, but just try to limit it. Spend only 30 minutes before you go to bed every night watching a show you may like. It may be a hundred milliliters of straight spirit alcohol or something like that, where it really comes a detriment to maybe your family or it comes a detriment to friends and relationships in general. So the whole point is to switch that 100 to something else and it can really change your life. Okay, so next, I don't understand people who complain about their job and continue to still do it. They work these minimum wage jobs, not because of the financial burdens, but because they're just too lazy. Now I'm gonna be honest, I do this myself. I worked at McDonald's for years now and I still do to this day and I also work at a warehouse. But I don't really complain about working these jobs because I'm trying to get out. I'm striving to do better and I'm sure you guys probably do as well. You're working a part-time job. You're trying to find a way out through a side hustle. I have a lot of friends like the one I interviewed last week who started his dropshipping business and starting to do really well. I have friends who participate in bands and perform at local clubs or bars. But you always got to strive in some form to get out of these places that you don't enjoy. We're probably like a mind in this way because we're pursuing a better future for ourselves, whether it's chasing a career, money, influence, fame. It's just that I find people are too comfortable in these shitty jobs that they don't enjoy. Even if you do make a lot of money and you don't enjoy the work, there's always a chance to go get a degree somewhere else or start a business somewhere else because you don't have financial instability where you can't leave a job for six months to a year and pursue something else. Just sometimes you have to have some accountability for your circumstance and look for something new. Some have just been told the wrong information like uni's too expensive, there's no point going. You may not even get a job anyway, so why not work at Kmart or something full time? Which is true to an extent. But there's plenty of other ways to gather skills and not work at Kmart. Maybe it's working in a trade or in a, some sort of startup business, doing sales calls, maybe marketing. And sometimes you'll have to work at the bottom doing the sales calls, but eventually can progress up and up and become some sort of senior manager. I'm not making this video to antagonize minimum wage workers. I myself am one, but I really recommend if you don't enjoy this job, to start working on something else to eventually get out and make a career out of something you really do enjoy. I actually have mad respect for Uber drivers who work enormous hours just to get ahead of the curb. And 9% of the time, the immigrant males who are looking to work extra hard and possibly pursue a career somewhere else. But what I find crazy is they're actually probably the happiest workplace in the world. I've never seen a 
upset Uber driver what they do. They actually always enjoy dropping and picking up people because they love the conversation. And to be honest, they're probably the only workforce that isn't completely miserable all the time. Last week I was in an Uber and the guy did content online just like me through podcasts and short form video, all because he ran a non-for-profit charity that he was trying to raise funds for. And I found that really, really amazing because he wanted to find a way out to help people. A lot of them also work a degree that can hopefully land them a better job in the future, or at least provide the opportunity for their kids and future generations to have better jobs and make higher income to break generations of poverty. Look at Gary Vee, one of the most prolific content makers in the world, and he started as an immigrant Russian who worked in his father's liquor business and scaled it to $60 million. And then at the age of 35, he switched to build VaynerMedia, which now has a valuation of a couple hundred million dollars. It's amazing the work ethic and values that they have, and I feel like some of the Western world is just missing that. Some of them are too entitled, and maybe myself, I'm too entitled, but I think pursuing something that you enjoy is really important for every person to try and tick off in their life. Next, I don't really have any regrets in life and I don't really believe in the whole notion of regret, but one thing I definitely wish I started sooner was going to the gym. If you're under the age of 15 or 16 and you've heard the stories about how the gym stints your growth at an early age, it's not good for your mind, it's not good for your body, you look disorientated, you'll become fat because you eat too much, just don't listen to all those people. If you stay really, really strict and really consistent, you'll look way better than all other guys at 20. Looking back now, I've done almost a year's worth of gym full time. I did about four or five months when I was 17 and I've done the last six, seven months straight. The difference between doing the gym and doing just like a casual sport is I think the gym really pushes determination and discipline to be consistent, to grow the body and physique because you're always attaining goals. While with sport, it's more laid back. You're playing sport, just have fun with mates. For me, I still play basketball. I have great fun doing it. We actually won a grand final last season, which I was away in Europe for, but not the point. It helps you break a lot of barriers of fear of being more sociable and more confident and comfortable in social scenes, especially with girls. For me as well, I grew up with a speech pathologist because I sometimes slur my S's and it sounds like I have a lisp, some, see, lisp sometimes, like I slur my S's and C's. It sounds really weird, but now I'm more confident and can talk to people in general. I've always been sociable, but you know, I'm still an introvert at the end of the day. I'm not sure what brain chemicals induces, but going to the gym really helps every area of life for the positive. And that's why it's so cliche for guys to go to the gym straight after heart rate because they feel like they weren't good enough. They feel like they were sometimes even worthless. Sometimes they feel like it was all their fault. A lot of young men sometimes feel demoralized or disenfranchised in society. And that's why they go to the gym as seen as a way out and lead on to a more prosperous life. And it takes a lot of confidence and bravery to even start working out. But I know for every single person watching this video who starts routinely working out, their life gets 10 times better and they'll feel better about themselves, more confident, better physical shape, and just they'll love it talking with people. It's really a great feeling. To some, it just feels like a chore. So they may resort to playing tennis, doing boxing, playing, like I said, for myself, basketball because they enjoy the more social aspect of talking with friends and still doing the cardio. You may not enjoy either sports or the gym, so you may go for a walk. No one hates going for a walk with a friend, just an hour or two every single week. It's a start. But doing some sort of physical exertion is healthy, not only for your body, but more importantly, your mind. Okay, so one of the most important things to do before you turn 20 is to set up your friendship circle. Now, often people finish high school by now, they're starting to enter uni, trimming off the edges of their friendship circle and have three to five really close friends who can go out to bars, to clubs, to sporting events, to chill at someone's house, you know? Have that friendship circle who you see regularly and can just have fun with. I think it's also important to have friends to go out with based on certain interests, you know? Some might like playing chess, some might like going hiking. Maybe because you love going hiking, you're like, cool, we'll go camping, give it something to try so we can at least go away with each other for a week and every couple months. Some like going to the beach together, some like going overseas together to New Zealand, to Thailand, to Bali, the common places around Australia. It's also really important to have friends who are on the same life path as you. You know, they're not dragging you down. They want to push you further to achieve your goals in life. They aspire for you to become better people. And it's really important to have that close group of three to five people who push each other constantly every single day with the gym, with their career, with their money, with their goals. And me, I'm the finance guy in the group. I have another friend who's the sports guy in the group, another guy who's the fitness guy in the group, another guy who's the self-improvement guy in the group. Like there's lots of different characteristics that people have in a friendship group that mold together and push each other to inspire and have better lives going forward. Because you really hold each other accountable for these things as well. Like I said, I don't really have any regrets in life, but here in Melbourne, Australia, we had 9 p.m. curfews during the lockdowns. 
Can't say the C word. We also weren't allowed five kilometers out of our area. We weren't allowed to have other people that didn't live in our residency in our house. So you couldn't see your grandparents, you couldn't see family, you couldn't see friends, even if it's just one or two at a time. It was all blocked off. But one thing you could do is go see two other people and go for a walk in your local area. And I had two friends who lived really close by and for the about year and a half we had when we were in lockdown, I did not walk with them once. Now, keep in mind, I walked home from school every single day with these guys when I was in school. But for some reason, I don't know why looking back, we didn't catch up, at least at a bare minimum. But what I learned from that is that we don't get these times back with friends. So we've got to make the most of every opportunity with them now. I also didn't see these friends for like eight months straight. And now I made sure I changed that and make sure I see them every single week. And we always make time free to go out somewhere or go to someone's house. And we all have future goals, but it acts a lot, not only to have fun, but also to check in to make sure we're going all in a positive direction. Our careers, our money, our relationships are all going forward rather than restricting each other and holding us back from what we truly want to do in life. So to summarize this point, have a strong tight group of friends who have similar interests, aspire to do good things in life and can set these goals that you can help each other with and also just have fun with on a regular basis. The camaraderie of a group of males is one of the most important things in a male's progression. And I think it's cool to have some stories that you've built in your 20s that you look back at an older age and just reminisce on the good times you had with your mates. Okay, so lastly is spending too much time on social media. I told my friend who was using TikTok way too much and trying to pretend that it was helping motivate him or it was helping to build his clothing style. I was being really honest with him and saying, you spend two hours on TikTok looking at clothing styles and motivation. No, and even if you did, that'd be stupid. I also asked him if TikTok was so helpful, then what were the last five videos that he liked? Ask yourself right now, what are the last five TikToks that you liked? What happened in them? Oh, you don't remember. Exactly. To be honest, no one can remember the last five TikToks they liked, me, myself included. So why bother wasting so much time on there if we don't even remember what happens when we're on the app? So yeah, try to find all the ways to reduce your screen time, you know, set app timers, block notifications, because at the end of the day, social media is really, really unhelpful and extremely bad for you. It just wastes your time and is bad for your mental health. I recently turned my phone to just being black and white and I use it nowhere near as much as I used to. I'm gonna show a video on my screen right now because I'm recording with my phone right now. But I'm gonna show a video on the screen of what it looks like and it's just so boring. A friend of mine also showed me on Android how to switch your little icons on the screen to something called Simple Black, which you can do through Galaxy Themes and settings. You just gotta search the extension up in Galaxy Themes, but not the point. But there's plenty of small tricks that you can find online that makes your phone less attractive to use. And it feels much more free and liberating than just spending time in this fictional world that people don't even seem real in. And it's all just through a screen that's not real anyway. It's a world where everyone tries to be perfect and craft this social media presence to make people like them. And most of the time it is positive, but also a lot of the time it's really negative. You know, people send hate comments, people send death threats, and it's a really bad environment to be in. It's funny that the people who share a lot of what they love, such as music and art, they post it on these social media platforms, they get a lot of backlash and hate, and they just stop doing it. You know, it ruins a lot of dreams, seriously does. So ideally what we should all be doing is spending less time on our phones, have less screen time, and also post online. It should be a free and again, liberating place where people are not scared to post online and are instead encouraged, not antagonized. Anyways, that's just a short list I made because I'm now an old 20 year old, but <laughs> Those cornerstones are really important for you to build before you turn 20 and then moving on from there. And to be honest, for me, all these steps, I've only really been focusing on it from the last six months to a year. So those of you who are younger than 18, younger than 15, younger than 14, you guys can start now and get ahead of majority of people. No one learns this stuff at this age. I didn't know anyone who learned this stuff at this age. But implementing as many of these steps as possible at any age is really important for your personal growth journey. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this list. Share with a friend if you think this could also help them. I wanna build an audience of camaraderie, people who wanna achieve bigger things. So if you wanna join that journey, click subscribe. I hope you enjoyed and hey now.